An important part of coding web pages is ensuring your code is well formatted and error free. An important tool that we have to do this is by using validators. Validation can be defined as the process of validating web elements for any syntax or format errors. Errors may not always present themselves visually in the browser, but they can ultimately cause issues depending on the version of the browser or the language that you're viewing the website in, and at the least, it makes your code look sloppy and unthorough. Your goal as a web developer is to create well-formatted, semantic, clean code. Validators are your friend when it comes to this. The HTML validator is used to validate the syntax errors. These are things like missing quotation marks, open tags, and unnecessary blank spaces. These can all cause the web page to look different from which the developer has originally intended it to look. If we have to validate HTML web elements manually, it's a very tough and time-consuming job, and there's a huge chance that you might miss the mistake. After all, you probably inadvertently made the mistake, right? In addition to creating valid HTML, you'll also want to validate your CSS, the cascading style sheets. The more you code, the more chance that you have errors in your code. So making validation and debugging part of your development process is always advisable. When you use the validator, you'll have the following benefits. Increased web accessibility. If your HTML code is clear, then it can avoid certain blocks or issues which restrict the user to search the site or can affect the accessibility of a website. Page loading is much faster. If the unwanted code is removed, then it makes the code base small so the application will load faster. Load shed on servers. Good and error-free code reduces the space required and the cost as well. Compatibility of browsers. There may be a possibility that the current code works fine in one browser, but it shows some unexpected outcomes in other browsers. So in order to make sure that your website is compatible on all platforms and all browsers, HTML validation is advised before deployment. If the code is validated for compatibility issues, then it avoids the risk of any browser issues. Let me show you how we can go about validating our code. Here I have our web page that we built in a previous exercise. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of the code on the page and copy it. I'll use the keyboard shortcut of Command or Control C to do that. There are a number of validators out there, but I'm going to share one which I like. The validator that we're going to be using is validator.w3.org. It is possible to put in a URL if your website is being hosted on the web, but since we're developing locally, we can't use this option. You can also validate by uploading a file. You simply browse your computer and upload the file. Personally, I find it faster to validate by direct input and simply paste in my code, which is what I'm going to do here. I'll use the keyboard of Command or Control V to do so. Now I'll click Check to run the validation. Once you do so, you're going to see the results that are going to show up on the bottom of the page. It is worth noting that you may get several warnings. I suggest that you look through these and see if they're worth fixing, but more than often, warnings will occur within a website. It is worth being aware of them, but usually I'm not too worried if I simply have warnings. You will know that your document is successfully checked if it says document checking completed, and if you only have warnings, you know that your code is valid. Let me show you what happens if we input some code that is not valid. I've created an identical page, but I've gone ahead and inserted some mistakes so that we can see what this looks like if we have errors. Once again, I'm going to select all this code and copy it. I'll come to the input text dialog box and select what's there and delete it. I'm going to paste in my new text and I'll click check. At this point, you can see that we get some different messages, and clearly we have a plethora of errors that are being listed here. It is worth noting that sometimes the errors can be a little cryptic. It's not always completely intuitive as to what they mean, 
but there is some good information that you can glean from the validator. I recommend that you always work top down. Sometimes errors that you've made on your page are going to compound and create additional errors. So right now, it really looks like we have eight errors and three warnings. We'll start at the top of the list and try to eliminate these errors. So if we start at the top one, it's letting me know that I have an error and the important information is that it tells me the line number on which this error occurs. So I know that there's an error on line five. It's also going to highlight a bit of code so that I know the general vicinity of where the error is. For this particular problem, if we go back to our actual document, the error is occurring on line five. In Adam, it doesn't appear that I have an error, but if I look closely, you can see that I'm missing my closing quotation mark after the XUA compatible, and I'm also missing my opening quotation mark under IE equals edge. Now that I've gone ahead and made these fixes, what I recommend is that you select all your code again, copy it, go back to the validator, and then input the new text into the field and run the checker. As you can see, that original error has now disappeared. So now we're down to seven errors. If we go to the next error, this one is a little bit more straightforward. You can see that this error is occurring on line 11, and it says that the image must have an alt attribute. So if we go back to line 11, you can see that I'm missing my alt attribute. So I'm simply going to add that into the document once again, I'm going to select all of the code and I'll copy it. We'll delete the existing code that's in the validator, paste in our revised code, and we'll click check. As you can see, we have eliminated that error. So now we've reduced the number of errors by one once again. Let's move on to the next one on the list. This one says, heading cannot be a child of another heading. This is occurring at line 13 and it has something to do with an H2. So if we go to line 13 and we check out this line of code, initially it may look okay. But if we look closely, you will see that there is no closing tag. What we've done here is we've created an opening element and then we have another opening element instead of closing this tag properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a forward slash. If the error is something simple like this, you may want to just go ahead and make the fix in the pasted text. So I can just add the forward slash here rather than pasting in the text. Now, if we go ahead and make that fix and click check, you'll see that we've reduced that error. And if we look, we've actually corrected quite a few errors. Before I had six errors and now I'm down to simply three. So just by fixing that one problem, I've eliminated three of the previous errors. That's why it's important to go through your code line by line and find the errors and make the fixes. Don't just try to look at all of them because some of these errors may be compounded by previous errors. The next error that we see is on the main element. It says end tag main scene, but there were no open elements. Once again, I'm going to see that this is occurring on line 56. If we go into our code and we scroll down to line 56, we can see here is our main element. And in Atom, if you click on an element, it will highlight the corresponding opening element. So this actually looks like it's okay. If you don't initially see the problem where it's specified, look around that area. You also might want to go back to the errors and see what the next error is. So my next error is occurring on line 51 and it says I have an unclosed element article. If we look on line 51, here's my opening article. And then you can see the closing article exists outside of the main element. So this is actually the problem. Main should encompass all three of the articles. I'm going to simply cut the main element. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll paste in main underneath the article. I'm going to select the code and copy it once again. And now when we come back and paste in our revised code, run the validator, 
you'll see that all of my errors have now been eliminated. As you can see, it is a little bit of a process, but this is a very important step that I want you to take on all pages that you code in HTML. I did also want to point out that I have our original valid page open in the browser, and this is what it looks like. Here is my page that contains the mistakes. As you can see, these pages look identical, so it's not always going to be apparent in the browser that you have a problem with your page. You can't simply rely on the browser. You'll need to run it through the validator because there is a chance that your code has errors and will not pass validation even though the browser renders it okay. So now that you know a little bit about how validators work, I just want to impress upon you that sometimes the message that the validator gives you is a little cryptic. So make sure that you check the line number and then you go into your code and use your detective skills to figure out what the problem might be. Validation is the process of checking a website's code to determine if it follows the formatting standards. If you fail to validate your website, your website will most likely suffer from errors. It may affect traffic and may have poor formatting and readability. Here's just a couple reasons why you want to validate. The first one is you can improve rankings with search engines. Validating your code will give you better search engine rankings. Errors in your code can affect your site's performance and make a big impact on your site's SEO. Search engines check the HTML and the CSS of your website when searching to bring it up. If they find invalid code, meaning that the code does not follow official rules, you might be removed from their indexes. Validation also helps ensure best practices are being met. Having standard compliant code is the best practice for web design. It also teaches and encourages best practices for all websites that are coded out there. While many people have learned how to create error-free code and make relatively few validation errors, most beginners tend to make more errors. Running your code through the validator can help beginners learn from their mistakes and ensure their code is error-free. Validation will also improve the website user experience. Valid websites can be easily accessed by people with modern browsers. Validation improves usability and functionality because your users are less likely to run into errors when displayed on browsers compared to non-validated websites. A website validation process allows website designers to correct formatting errors that impact website performance and follow international standards. The codes used in websites is reduced in size while improving efficiency. Because this, valid pages are displayed much faster and flow much better compared to websites that have not been validated. You want to make websites browser friendly. This is one of the biggest reasons why code validation was introduced. Websites that are not validated may display correctly in one browser, but not run correctly in another. Many websites face cross browser problems. Websites that are not valid may display formatting problems when used in certain browsers, but valid websites are displayed without errors regardless of what browser is used. We also want to validate because people will be accessing our websites on all forms of devices. You'll want to make sure that your websites are mobile friendly. If your website is valid, you'll have a way better chance of ensuring that your website is going to work correctly. Validation can also help for easy coding and maintenance. When your website code is valid, it's formatted efficiently, it's easy to edit, and it will help website owners and developers to create new pages or other websites with similar formatting. Finally, validation is a debugging tool. Validators tell you where you have errors in your code. If your page isn't displaying as expected, a validator might very well point you to the cause of your display problems. Validating your code is an important debugging process. Even if the browsers visually render your code correctly, you could still have errors. So make sure that validation is part of your development process. It's always the goal to code correctly and error-free.